Hey everyone, my name is Brandon Olander. I'm on the drum staff with the Blue Doubles and Blue Doubles B. And today I'm going to be showing you a little exercise to help you be band ready for this fall. So the exercise we're going to be working on today is called the shopping spree. And what that is, is it's basically a framework to practice different flam rudiments. It's usually triplet based, so it works especially well with triplet based rudiments. But you'll see them written different ways and you'll see different rudiments written in them. And today we're going to work on the big three. And the big three just refers to the three most common rudiments seen in shopping sprees. And those are the flam drag, the cheese, and the flam five. So let's start by playing the flam accent. If you've never played this rudiment before, or if you're not super comfortable with it, that's totally okay. We're gonna break this down first, and then that'll help us to learn the other flam rudiments as well. So the first thing that I like to do when I'm learning a new rudiment is take it so slow that I'm not gonna play it incorrectly. Take it slow enough that you're gonna nail the sticking as well as the dynamics. If you can play those two things, you could probably play the rudiment. So let's, let's take the flam accent really slow. I'm just going to take it as quarter notes and I'm going to say out loud what the sticking is. So let's do that together. One, two, ready, and go. Flam, tap, tap, flam, tap, tap, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. So let's try that one more time a little bit faster. I'll still say the sticking and some other things out loud, and we'll still play the flame accent as quarter notes. One, two, ready, go. Flam, tap, tap, flam, tap, tap. Right, left, right, left, right, left. One more thing I should add is in order to play flam accents and any other flam rudiments really well, you have to play consistent flams. So it's worthwhile to just break down some flams and make sure that you're playing those accurately. You're always playing the, the spacing of the grace note to the primary note consistently. You're not playing them too open where it sounds like two separate notes. And you're also not playing them so tight that it sounds like one note. Okay, once you've gotten your flams down and then your flam accents at a slow tempo, the next thing that I like to do to help increase the speed is break the rudiment down one hand at a time. So in the case of a flam accent, that'll sound like this. How did I figure that out? One way you can do, you can do this with any rudiment, is play with just one hand on the drum and the opposite hand on your leg. So I'll do that with the flam accent now. Doing that, you can really hear what the pattern is that just one hand is playing. So, in the case of the flam accent, we're playing one accent, and then followed by three taps. Since we're playing the flam accent as triplets in this exercise, I'll go ahead and make sure that that rhythm lines up with a triplet. So that'll sound like this. Triplet, 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 triplet. So once you've played the pattern of one hand, you can start to slowly add in the opposite hand. The first thing that we're playing in this rudiment is a flam, so I'll go ahead and play one left hand, the grace note, and I'll still play the same right hand pattern. One, two, ready, and go. Cool, once you've gotten that one left hand note, we can think, what's the next note we play? It's a left hand tap, so I'll add in that left hand. So now we're playing two left hands, and then we're playing the same pattern on the right hand. One accent, and then three taps. That'll sound like this. One, two, ready, go. Cool, so we're playing the first three notes of a flame accent. We're playing one whole count of flame accent. Then, count two, we're playing a left hand flam, so I'll go ahead and add that note in on the left hand. That'll sound like this. One, two, ready, go. We're 
we're almost there. We only have one more note to add to make it a full two counts of flame accents, and that's the last left hand tap. So let's go ahead and add that in. One, two, ready, go. We can do the same thing to work on the other rudiments in this exercise as well. So let's take a flame drag, for example. So if we were to play the flame drag with one hand on the drum, that would sound like this. So we can hear that we're playing the same thing as the flam accent, one accent, and then three taps, but on the last tap, you're playing a diddle. So that makes the rudiment a little bit more difficult since you have to play three notes in a row, one, two, three, and then the third note is where you have to place that diddle. Something that I think really helps with these more difficult flam rudiments is to make sure that when you play those three taps in a row, they're really rebounding as opposed to forcing them all in each as an individual stroke. This will really limit you in your tempo as you're trying to get this faster. So the more that you're able to rebound those three notes, the easier it'll be to play all of these rudiments at a faster tempo. Some things that I think become more difficult as we put the rudiments in order is making sure that the transitions are good. So switching into and back out of a rudiment, making sure that that's not affecting our dynamics and our rhythm is really important. Something I like to do to work on that is make sure that I can play just one count of each new rudiment. So let's, I like to take the first bar and then just one count of flam drags. And then I might do the same thing with the cheeses and then the same thing with the fives. So let's try that. If you can nail one count of each rudiment, it'll be easier to play four counts in a row. On the other hand, if you can't play the first count in time, it's going to be really difficult to play the other three counts in time. Especially if you haven't worked on these rudiments before, it's not really expected that you're able to play this exercise in just the time of this short video. So don't be afraid to spend some time individually, work on these rudiments, and try to put them back into this context. And then from there, you can add different rudiments. You can play flam taps, inverted flam taps, any other flame rudiment you can think of and try to put it into the framework of the shopping spree. Okay, let's try that one more time from the top. I hope that this has been helpful and maybe given you something to practice, and I hope that you enjoy your fall season. Thank you.